a very simplistic gospel. Mark chapter 14 and the verse is 72. It sounds like it's a long way down the chapter, and it is, but it's the last verse of the chapter. Very few chapters have more than 72 verses. Mark 14, 72, and the second time the cock crew. I think I'll read that again, since it's only one verse. And the second time the cock crew. That, of course, means the rooster crowed, right? And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. That word being, quote, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he, that is Peter, thought thereon, he wept. I'd like to bring out three thoughts here. The second time the cock crow. Peter called to mind the word. When he thought thereon, he wept. Lord, I thank you tonight for the reading of the Scripture. Let us meditate upon thy very word tonight. And upon so thinking, let the tears stream down our eyes. May we weep also. May we have a brokenness and a contriteness and an openness and a, a sacred partition in our heart tonight for thus saith the Lord the very written word of God Lord we contemplate upon it now we mull it over in our mind we derive truth we squeeze every drop of juice out of it that's possible to wring from the word and even now Lord may it now find a lodging place and let it not depart but let it return to accomplish not void, but to accomplish. In the marvelous name of Jesus, I praise you for the Word of God for a few brief minutes tonight as we uh, lay a foundation for confirmation. Lord, let the Word of God go forth and let it be confirmed mightily among the people. Lord, you don't confirm Time Life, Newsweek Magazine, and the Reader's Digest. You only confirm your Word. Now we're listening on to it. Anoint it. Let it be reverent and sacred for a few moments. And everyone said Amen. Now seated you may be, you've done real well. You're getting used to how the preacher feels who's been on his feet throughout the evening. Hallelujah. I love him, don't you? Now Peter had his problems. Of course, none of you have ever had any of them. Most of Peter's problems happened before Pentecost. After Pentecost, there was a differential. Something made the difference in his life, and of course we know what that was. Do we not? It was being filled with the Holy Ghost. Won't that make the difference? That's power not to be tickled and tingled and to feel good and to say, hey, I'm on a spiritual high, and is this the best I'm going to feel today? But empowered to do something for God. Without the Lord factor the Holy Ghost factor in your life, you'll probably just as futile be as Peter was and fall flat on your face as many times. Now, as bombastic as the boy was and as bold and brazen and with authority that he had naturally, there was a time that God could use this, but he had to break him and melt him and mold him so that he could fill him so that the anointing that he would receive would not leak out. Friend, he's got to make your life all over again. Here is Jeremiah at the potter's house saying, Behold, the potter is working a work upon the wheels, and the vessel that was made of clay, that's you, marred, of course that's us, in the hand of the potter, thank God it's still in his hands, was made again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it as it spun on the wheels, as the wheels might be spinning in your head right now. I hope that the wheel in the middle of the wheel is spinning in your soul right now. God's going to make your life all over, but it'll be just as He wants it to be. And uh, if that be the case, why, don't complain. Be yourself. God will use you. Uh, we already have one of that other guy. Just because you like him, don't bother copying him. He's about all we can take. And if we can just barely take the original, we certainly can't bear the facsimile. Say amen. 
So here is Peter, and I just want to elaborate on him a little bit tonight and talk to you about the second warning. The second warning. Now it's evident that the rooster crowed three times. Is that true? Now, Peter had already denied the Lord three times. Thank God it was Peter's action and not God's action. There's something about three that is a complete number. It's a perfect number. It's fulfilled. It's completed. It's like strike three, you're out. Hello. It's like you, the first time that you make a mistake, you learn by it. And then if you ignorantly and blunderingly go ahead and make the same mistake the second time, you're not too smart. Hello. And then the third time you make the same mistake, <coughs> curtains, all zero, there's no hope for you. Hallelujah. Uh, the rooster only crowed twice, thank God. I said God didn't completely cut Peter off. There wasn't much difference between Peter and Judas. They both denied him. They both turned their back upon him. But I submit unto you tonight, that's a point of no return. There is an area in God's mercy called grace period. That's better known as space to repent. Time to get back to God. And Brother Stewart, I understand you have upset the books. And you have squandered your Lord's goods. Oh, yes. Well, I'll give you a little bit more time. But instead of taking the time to balance the book, the steward went out and knocked on doors in the community and gave people a shortcut. He began to make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. You see, you can't serve God and mammon. That is, you can't serve God and materialism and things. So he knocks on one door and says, Hey, how much do you owe my lord the king? Well, said the lord's debtor, and we're all in debt to the lord. I owe the lord 100 measures of oil. Isn't that the truth? How many believe you owe him 100% of the oil, the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life? 100 measures. Well, if you sit down quick, said the ex-steward, the man who was being put out of the ministry by his own choice, for he had time to straighten out his act, and instead he went around feathering his nest and lining his pockets, getting people on his side by giving them bargain basement religion, shortcuts, jiffy 7-Eleven gospel. Hello. Wondering why the preacher bends his ears, listening for a response, amen, oh me or oh my, one of them will fit you. So he begins to, I say, if you sit down real quick and don't think about it, just sign on the dotted line, hurry, and don't even meditate upon it at all, and write to 50, the debt will be paid. Uh, any poor sap knows the debt will never be paid at 50% when God requires 100 measures. Yet, across the land, they have cut the anointing in half. The oil is half gone. People go home from Sunday morning service. Ooh, wasn't that a wonderful service? What would the poor dears know about a wonderful service? They have never been allowed to see one, to feel one, to be involved in one. It's amazing how much you can filter out from the leadership and from behind a pulpit. When you are conducting revival, in fact, there's a lot of things that can contribute and add to the service, and there's ways to cut it off, too, so people will think they've had a good time. Hello here. I'm saying if you owe God 100 measures of oil, don't let nobody con you into 50% of it. Well, we don't speak in tongues in this church. If you want to pray, brother, do it after we've all gone home. If you really want to dance in the spirit, I didn't say by orchestration and being taught by lesson and learning. Well, if you want to dance in the spirit, you go down cellar. Hmm? And then there are ways of seeing what God wants to do and then putting your own program in its place. Hence, you see, uh, some people think that they are doing God justice and doing their part to satisfy Him on 50 measures of oil. Not so. All right. All the Lord's debtors said amen. The next time you have a knock on your door, and there's only one good thing I can say about the Jehovah's Witnesses, and that is that they will knock on doors something that the Pentecost used to know how to do. 
when I'm talking about Pentecost here, I'm talking about getting filled with the Holy Ghost and not a denomination. Pentecost is an experience. It is not a denomination. And if you've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, well, then you know what I'm talking about. A man with an experience has more than a man of an argument. The only reason we got denominations today is because enough people got the same experience. They all got together and organized it. I'm not against denomination by any means, but I am against organizing on nothing. First, it is the experience, and then some people are so scatterbrained they need to be organized. But if you are organizing on no experience, you have got dead religion once more. Hallelujah. Uh, knocking on the door of the next Lord's debtor, how much do you owe my Lord the King? 100 measures of wheat, which makes flour, which makes bread, which is the biggest type in Scripture of the Word of God. You see. So, quick, sit down and write 80%, 80 percent, 80 measures. And the debt will be paid. The debt will never be paid when you slice 20% of God's Word off the top. It's the whole book from cover to cover, as they say in Massachusetts, and from cover to cover, as they say in Ohio, and from kiver to kiver, as they say in Texas. Genesis to Revelation is necessary for all of us. Every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, and every line. Oh, thank God. The promises are yea and amen to him that will believe. Now, Tonight, I say that God expects 100% of the Word, 100% of the Holy Ghost in your life. For the Spirit and the Word agree to set men and women free. Hallelujah. So there's no shortcuts. Now, Peter was a man that was called from the fishing boat. He was just a rough, brusque sort of a fella. But he was called to be a, fishers of, a fisher of men. He already had some practice. How many is praying that it will be good fishing tonight? We're after souls. That's why we're here. Every miracle that happens is because God is after a soul. He uses the miracle to reach the soul. He's real smart, this Lord that I'm serving. His priority is there. It's the number one thing as far as God's concerned is the soul of man. Hallelujah. Peter is now starting in his Christian processing and someone said I got saved my troubles are over most of them have just begun the devil has never even known you have existed until now you've never bothered him you've never been a threat to him and he never bothers somebody he's already got so if he's been after you thank God he hasn't got you yet your hand must still be in Jesus hand just keep hanging in there the process is on God's going to be processing you from the point of salvation. Now, aren't you glad you've been called? Peter called from his fishing nets. Now goes down to the sea one day and says, I, I feel awful foolish, but they've been asking me if my uh, master pays his taxes or not. And Jesus said, of course, I pay taxes. They want tax money? <laughs> Nothing to me. I know where it's at. Just go on down to the sea there, Peter. You're used to going fishing anyhow. Pick up the first fish and the tax money will be in his mouth. Which proves if you catch the right fish, you'll pay the bills. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, he could have picked up any fish, but you see, there's something about the foreordination of God. There's something about the decree of God. Something about the command of God. It was impossible for him to pick up any fish but the right one. All kind of fish in the sea. There's lots of toads in the puddle. Hallelujah. But here, he picks up in spite of himself. He cannot go into error. He cannot do wrong. And that's exactly how it is when the power of God hits you and the Holy Ghost whelms up in your life and the gift of God operates be before you, within you, around you, comes out your mouth and through your fingertips. You cannot go into error. Yeah, we got people around here just squalid and paranoid and full of paranoia. Oh, Brother Freddy, oh, you make me so nervous. Why don't you just quit while you're ahead? You scare me half to death. If you just stop after you guess the first thing right, I can't go wrong when the Holy Ghost is on me. Oh, shut up, my heart. I said, I can't pick up the wrong fish. There's a whole church full of fish here tonight. I believe I'll get the right fish. Jesus sends me, says, go uh, get the first fish you 
cause the rest of you to disappear and leave only one sticking out like a sore thumb if he has to. But the gift of God is not in error. It is pure. It is true. It is real. It's true that you've got to get in that gift, but once you know you're there, the gift of God will not lead you astray. How many understands that tonight? You see, most of what Jesus did was clear over Peter's head. And I propose to prove it to you tonight, and it took him a long time to learn it, and he never did learn it until he got filled with the Holy Ghost. We see Jesus walking on the water. Amen. He's back down at the sea again, and Peter had an awful lot to do with the sea. He did pick up the right fish, open his mouth, and there was the tax money right in his mouth. Wow. Exactly to the penny of what we owe Caesar. Well, it's Caesar's, Jesus said. Go give it to him. But don't forget to give to God the things that belong to God either. Hello. Some say, are you sure it's Caesar's? Well, let me look at it again, Jesus said. I see Caesar's picture on it. His date is on it. His superscription's on it. Who made this thing? Uh, Caesar. Who's it belong to? Oh, Caesar. Who issued it? Caesar. Well, for goodness sake, is it bound to be Caesar? Let's go give it to him. I said, aren't you glad that God makes things for you that man-made paper can't do for you? Man makes paper. God makes miracles and provisions and meets needs. Hallelujah. There's a big difference when you stop to think about it. So he found out of the fish the right tribute money, just like Jesus said. Now Jesus is walking on the sea, and of course Peter said, If it be thou, bid me come to thee walking on the water. And he walked a few steps, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he became afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Once more, he was going down to Davy Jones's locker. The thing was over his head. I said he was getting in over his head. I said he was sinking underwater and the water was going over his head. You caught me that time, didn't you? Most of what Jesus did was over Peter's head. But notice that though it was over Peter's head, it was from the beginning beneath Jesus' feet. I said Jesus was walking on the water. He had it all underneath his feet. And most of what's over your head is beneath Jesus' feet too. Say amen. And everything's going to be put underneath his feet. Even the last enemy of death is going to be put underneath his feet. And finally, this whole world universe is going to be put under his feet. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he's Lord to the glory of God. And that's just all she wrote. End of the matter. Hallelujah. Since you're going to do it anyhow, I suggest you practice up tonight. Get used to it this evening. Hallelujah. So here's Peter going down again. It was over his head, but it was under Jesus' feet. Aren't you glad he is still in control? <laughs> Some say, I'm going berserk. I'm beside myself. I I'm just going to pieces. I'm going to have a breakdown. I'm going nuts. Don't worry. He's got it under control. It's under his feet. It may be over your head, but it's under his feet. Say hallelujah. Are you happy? <laughs> say, thank God I love him. Oh, oh glory. All right, here, here's Peter. And uh, one day, Jesus turns around and says, Whom do men say that I am? And one of the disciples said, John the Baptist risen from the dead. Another said, Elijah and Elias and Jeremiah and uh, on and on. And finally, something struck old Peter, and it took quite a bit. It took a divine revelation. But it smacked him right between the eyes. And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right out of nowhere. Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. And unto you I'm going to give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Not just to Peter only, but to all the disciples and to all the saints down in 1986 and all the church ages, all the seven churches of Asia and every church. That is everyone who can receive divine revelation. Did you catch that? Say hallelujah. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood have not revealed it to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you, and on to you I will give the keys to the kingdom. So I say tonight that the keys of the kingdom is based upon revelation. First, the revelation of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he's going to do for you. Secondly, a revelation of God's word, which you should be striving to understand while it's being preached, because it's supper time now. Supper being ended... The devil put something in Judas's heart. You read that in there? Jesus said, It will be the one who betrays me, will be the one that I'll give a dip sop 
I will give him a sop, and he will receive a sop after I've dipped it. But a dip sop is a thin wafer by which you eat from a common dish, and anyone of an ounce of sense would have known that supper was long ago over. Except Judas, of course. No revelation, no understanding at all. I mean, Jesus had finished supper. He had now stood up and washed feet. He had now preached him a sermon. He now began to say, some of you is going to betray me. Long ago, supper was finished. And finally, when he's talking about betraying, he dips the sop while he's speaking, passes it to Judas, and Judas says, Oh, thank you, Lord. Took the sop, and no sooner did he take the dip sop when the devil entered into him, and he went out, and it was immediately night. Now, it's important to pay attention when the Word of God's going on. Most people just let it in one ear and out the other. But if Judas had been listening, maybe he wouldn't have took that dip sop since supper had been over a couple hours ago. I say, it's supper time. You better eat now. Don't come up after church and say, Brother Freddie, what was you talking about? What was you preaching on? Would you pray for me now? You better get it while the getting's good. Strike while the iron's hot. Make hay while the sun shines. Jump in the pool when the waters is troubled. That is the time to partake while supper's going on and after supper's ended God has changed the order of the service and he's doing something different now let's have enough revelation to recognize it because only then will the keys of the kingdom work in your hands hallelujah now understood well one thing the Pharisee said that was right one thing these people who know not the law are cursed woe is us if we do not have any understanding of the word of God in other words Amen. All right. Earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. And though you may not comprehend it all, stay open. The Spirit will make it real to you. Maybe you don't understand big words. Maybe you don't understand important themes and truths. But it can sink in supernaturally if you just show up for work. Just show up with an open heart and listen. Hallelujah. I love him. So here... Judas receives a dip sop, so uh, be careful about what you eat after supper. While supper's going on, it's the time to eat. Back home, we used to go to the woodshed if we miss supper, and then to bed hungry. Hallelujah. <laughs> the keys to the kingdom was given on to Peter and to all who could receive a revelation from our Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. All right? Are you happy? Thank the Lord. Now, Peter had quite a time of it. Uh, words would fail me to say all the problems that he went through. But the day did come, just before Jesus went to the cross, that up came a bunch of soldiers and said, We are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Jesus said, Let these go. You looking for Jesus of Nazareth? Mm hmm. Said three words I am He. They must have been mighty potent, powerful, heavy words. The I am speaking. The I am being the He. Because the next thing you know, they were all slain out in the spirit, prostrate, flat on the ground on their backs. And all he said was, I am He. I wonder what would have happened if He really started speaking the word. So, yeah, he may. That was pretty evident that uh, Jesus didn't need any help. He could have called 12,000 angels. All he had to do was speak to them. They'd have consumed and incinerated. Amen. But Peter was hiding in the bushes up until then. But the minute he saw that they were ahead in the game, all the soldiers had been whipped by three little words full of potency. Up out of the bushes came Peter, and he pulled out his sword and said, I want to get the part of this too. Most everybody can ride the bandwagon after the work's done. I said, most everybody can come in and get elected to the deacon board after the church is built. Getting awful quiet in here now. Are you listening? Most anybody can come in and help toot the whistle, but very few will come in and go down to the basement, to the boiler room, and pray up the steam. Ouch. Hallelujah. A little red hen that we learned about back in the second grade grew the grain, and she 
uh, planted it, she cultivated it, she uh, tended it, she sprayed it, she weeded it, she harvested it, she ground it, she baked it, and all, every step of the way she asked for help and couldn't find a lick of help. Finally, she said, who's going to help me eat it? And everybody from the barnyard jumped up and said, we'll help eat it. Hello. Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus tonight? Thank God. Here come Peter the sword. i got to get in on this. You should have got in on it while the faith factor was operating, Peter. The battle was whipped. Now they're all flat in the ground. But that didn't stop Peter. Up he came and cut off Malchus's ear. Now, Jesus said, you put your sword back into the sheath. If you'd have been here last night, you'd have heard about putting the sword back in the sheath. It was called, according to Aaron R's threshing floor, where David was uh, paying for his sin. It was called buying, building, and binding. The sword was hovering over Jerusalem. See that? And the Lord said, stay the sword, that's enough. But God didn't say put the sword in the sheath. That sword could have went back to work any minute. But David fell on his face and bought the field, and he built the altar, and of course, repented. And then that bound up the plague. For now the Lord said, I see man is doing his part. I'll certainly do mine. I stayed the sword, but now man on earth is repenting. The next step is mine. Put the sword, angel, back in your sheath. The plague is bound. No more men will die. It'll stop at 70,000. Hallelujah. The sword went back into the sheath, and Jesus said, If you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Another way of saying, You will reap what you sow. Okay? Are you loving his word tonight? Now here's Peter with a bloody ear laying on the ground, and Jesus said, Now, Peter, look what you've done. Picked the ear up and stuck it back on Malchus's head, and his hearing came back, and there was no scar there, no blood dripping. My, this must be a creator we're dealing with here tonight. I said, we must be dealing with creator here tonight. Well, there was nothing made without him, and without him was nothing made that was made. The scripture said he was from the beginning. He just did not originate in Mary's womb. This thing was not done in a corner. It was laid from the foundation of the earth before time was ever instituted back in eternity. It always was. Hallelujah. It is he who was and who is and who is to come. Aren't you glad he's coming? Hallelujah. The same that was and the same that is is about to come. Wave your hands. I'm looking for Jesus. Unto those that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hallelujah. Every man that's got this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Oh, glory to God. So here's Peter's dilemmas. And he always had trouble with doors anyhow. Every time uh, a door was open, he stumbled to get through it. Most of the time he never could get through it. In fact, it was totally personified in the day that he and John went with Jesus to Caiaphas' judgment hall, and they were walking three abreast along with the soldiers until they got to the door of the judgment hall. When they come to the door, John walks in with Jesus, and Peter stands at the door without. If you can't get through the door, my friend, you will be without. You can't get through the door of that sanctuary right there. You will be without the sanctuary. Amen. If you can't get through the door of your healing, you'll be doing without your healing. Hallelujah. John looked around and said, hey, my goodness. What happened to Peter? Now, John didn't mind being identified of Jesus. No more than I do standing here tonight. I'll let you know shortly whose side I'm on. Hallelujah. Caiaphas says, I recognize you, John. And the Bible said that Caiaphas knew John, just like John knew Caiaphas. And Jesus was there, and John was there. And John said, well, that cotton-picking Peter. And he turned around and said, Caiaphas, you know I'm not running out on him. I'll be right back. He goes out to the door and talks to Peter. And Peter, well, what are you doing out here? You're going to be without and do without and totally uh, be beyond it all. Well, said Peter, I'm out here. I can't get you to come in. Well, I'm going to stay right here. He always had trouble with doors after that. 
I said, they locked him up in Acts chapter 4, and it took an angel to come down and open the door. Say amen. He got ready to raise Dorcas from the dead, and uh, he couldn't do nothing. He had to put everybody outside the door and lock the door. Say amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Did you know he was in Acts chapter 12, bound between four quaterns of soldiers? And he said, well, it's all over now. But an angel came into the prison because the church prayed. And the praying church prayed without ceasingly unto to God for Peter. And God delivered Peter. And, of course, he showed up at his own prayer meeting, and they didn't believe he was delivered. I mean, that's the first church for you. First Church of Jerusalem, praying prayers they don't even believe, and yet they're being answered. What a merciful God. Well, he said, now, Angel, I, I, I think I'm having a dream, but I'll go along with it. I, I, he didn't say, I can't stand up, because he thought he was dreaming anyhow, so he went on, and the chains fell off in him, and he walked past the first ward and the second ward, but he came to the door that wouldn't open. I said, the old boy's having trouble with doors all his life. He said, I just can't give up. We've come this far by faith, and I'll just have to believe God to make a hole in the door, if that's the case. But when he walked straight up within a step of the iron gate, it opened of its own accord. Hallelujah. Brother, if he'd have thought about it, he wouldn't have approached the door at all because he knew what kind of trouble he had with doors. You see, everything that was over Peter's head was under Jesus' feet. You understand? I mean, he had it all in control, but Peter didn't have a clue. He needed the same Pentecost that you and I need here tonight. Say praise the Lord. Uh, thank. Now, if that weren't bad enough, he was out in Jerusalem in the streets thereof, and he went to his own prayer meeting and knocked on the door, and they wouldn't even let him in. There he was, pounding on the door, and he said, It's me, Peter, and that little Rhoda. She, My goodness, it's Peter. And she forgot and left him locked out. Ran all the way back. Said, get up on your feet now. You can stop your praying. God's answered prayer. What you talking about, Rhoda? Well, the, Peter's at the door without. Yeah, he usually is. If you don't walk through the door God opens for you, you will be without. That's just that simple. Hallelujah. Now, now surely you're crazy in the head, little sister. Now, she was preaching deliverance. You see, God has delivered Peter. And yet... When she preached deliverance, they thought she was nuts, just like they think we're nuts when we preach deliverance. You are crazy. You're mad. But after a while, she constantly affirmed that it was even so, so they changed their mind like most people do because basically people are compromisers. Uh, they're just trying to level off the difference, you know. They want to live in peace and coexist, and they want to get by. They'll accept you if you accept them. And... So they changed their opinion and said, well, I tell you what, maybe you're not nuts, Rhoda, but you've seen a ghost. You've seen his angel. It's just a spirit out there. No, it's Peter. Uh, are you sure? Did you see him? No, but I heard him. Now, we don't see Christ, but we hear from him every now and then. But we shall see him one day. Hallelujah. Well, we'll just go to the door and we'll just show you that you're, uh, you're a little bit off, Rhoda, and we'll just appease you. So to the door they came, and there stood Peter. They finally let him in the door, and they were all astonished. I believe the days of amusing people is over. It's time to be amazing them. It's time to be amazing them. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. So Peter got through another door. In fact, I understand he had trouble even getting into heaven. Tradition, church history tells us that he was crucified in Rome upside down. Uh, even going through the door to heaven, he went in there backwards and upside down. Say amen. What I'm really trying to tell you is this. If God opens you a door, don't stumble over it, and don't be paranoid with fear to walk into it. Because if you stand outside the door, you will be without, and you'll do without, and you'll have trouble with doors the rest of your life. Can you comprehend that tonight? Now, what was over Peter's head of course, it was under Jesus' feet, referring to the water of the Sea of Galilee. Now, getting back to Caiaphas' hall, John couldn't get Peter to come in the door. So he comes over and he whispers something in the little maid's ear. Now, I have a pretty good clue of what he spoke to her. 
because the next breath she took, she said, weren't you with that Nazarene, Peter? God's got different ways of getting the same job done. You've got a wishbone instead of a backbone. God will work around you. He'll work on you. He'll get someone to make you take a stand or fall flat in your face. Amen. I know that the Canaanites would not leave the land after the children of Israel had whipped the Hittites, Hevites, uh, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Amorites, the Termites, the Parasites, and all the Ites. They couldn't move the Canaanites. They were too tough. But God said, oh, that's nothing. I'll handle them because you can't handle them. God will do for you what you can't do for yourself. I understand. So all he had to do was send the hornets after him. And that, that he did according to Scripture. And when the hornets started stinging the Canaanites, zap, 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 the Canaanites, believe it or not, got up and started moving. They not only moved, they were mighty glad to move. Not just mighty glad, they were willing. Their will had changed. How many could say if the hornets were stinging you, you'd be willing to move too? Would you be going against your will? Huh? But would you be willing to go? What I'm saying is God's got lots of little tricks up his sleeve to get you to finally do his will. The same thing he said, I'll never do that. You better bite your tongue. If you hadn't have said that, you probably wouldn't have had to do that. But the minute you start dictating to God, delegating what you will and what you won't, God's got a big job on his hands to start breaking down your hide and start working on you until you finally do the thing you say you won't. It's not that he delights in you doing one thing as opposed to another. It's just that old stubborn will has got to go. You've got to be totally yielded and totally yielded to God. We're going to pray the prayer of faith in just a few moments tonight. In it, we must be totally yielded to God or nothing will transpire. You're going to be yielded to the Holy Ghost yourself. You're going to be yielded to the Word and the will of God. I've got to be yielded to whatever He directs me to do. I've got to go after the fish He tells me to go after. And if there's lots of fish in the sea, I'm bound to get the right one because He won't let me do no different. Say hallelujah. He can't uh, let me make a mistake. His very uh, Word and His uh, Spirit... And the gifts of the Spirit and everything that we hold to be dear and supernatural would be at stake. I mean, we've launched out into it. We have to let Him take control of it all. Amen. Now, the minute we start to reason on our own, make our own plans, make our own program, think it out in human idea, ideology, well, then we're going to miss it. But if we'll stay in the Spirit tonight, we won't be missing it. Aren't you glad? Ha, ha, ha. You love his word. Now watch this. The second rooster's crow. The second rooster crow is very important. He tells the little girl. Of course, I know what, he, what John told the little girl. He said, now that man's with me and I can't get him to come in here, but you can put him on the spot. We'll put the pressure to him. Ask him if he wasn't with Jesus, the Nazarene. And when she did, he denied. The first wound. The first sin. The first error, the first fall, the first stumbling block that he tripped over. He didn't pass the test, and John was surprised. Well, maybe he'll get it on the second go round. He's only got one strike on him. Say amen. Hallelujah. But now, as I told you, the first time you make the same, make a mistake, you learn through it and be listening for the second rooster. Be listening for him. Know that after the rooster crows once, he's going to crow again. God is warning you. These are warnings. God is checking you. God is possibly chastising you. God is putting a little judgment on you. God is giving you just a little bit of um, retribution. Amen. He's uh, taking a little bit out of your hide. He's taking a little bit of the wind out of your sails. He's taking you down a buttonhole lower. Say amen. And when you begin to feel these checks, the Lord reproving, the Lord rebuking, 
the Lord dealing. Hey, be keen. Be sensitive. Notice it. Pay attention to it. Because if you miss it the first time around, you're going to get it again. God's going to do whatever He can do to keep you from going to hell. God's going to do everything possible to process you so that you be fit and qualified for heaven. Say amen. All right, I won't be much longer here. Hang in there. Hallelujah. The roosters crowed once. How many can say, Brother Freddie, I know the roosters crowed once on me. I've had one warning already. Now, I'd like to stand up here and preach on the second touch, you know, the double portion, and, oh, God's going to touch you again tonight. Most preachers do. However, I'll have to really preach on the second rooster's crowing tonight. That is the second warning. Not the second blessing, the second warning. If you don't get some warnings, you're going to be totally void and devoid of blessings one day. God's anointing comes upon the cleansed vessel. Sin separates from God. If you're going to have the touch of God on your life, then you must come through the blood, the water, and the oil to be prepared to minister in the holy place. It's not oil, water, and blood. It's the blood first. Then it's the water. Then it's the oil. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. I'd like to tell you about how, well, Elijah was underneath that juniper tree, and Lord of mercy, the angel came down and touched him. Wow. Wake up, Elijah. It's a miracle cake and a miracle cruise of water. And he eats and he drinks, which is the word and the spirit in his life. But he lays back down the same old rod underneath the same old juniper tree like some of you. Right back in the same old grave of both ends knocked out, caught a rut. Now God is so merciful, sends the angel down, touches him again. Wow, what a merciful God. I got the second touch, said Elijah. And lo and behold, another miracle cake, another miracle cruise of water, and he eats and he drinks, but he smartens up that time. You see, he's not too far gone. I'm a firm believer that three strikes you out. Yes, I played too much baseball in my day. This time he went on the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights to hurl the mount of God. I can't tell you how God met him in the cave. Finally, he discerned the voice of God. After all the paraphernalia and fanfare and choreography went by and pageantry, finally he heard the voice of God. Hallelujah. And God said, I'd have you go and anoint Hazel, king of Syria, Anoint Jehu, king of Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, to pour water on your hands and be a prophet in your room. So by so doing, God prepared and took care of his enemies, the Syrians, took care of his people, the Israelites, and he took care of his ministry by raising up a successor to Elijah. Hallelujah. And that Elisha, if you please, stretched himself out upon a widow's son one time, and nothing happened except the flesh of the child wax warm. You know, a lot of folks come to meetings like this and their flesh warms up. But that's about all there is to it. You're going to have to have the second touch. Whoosh. Stretched himself on the corpse a second time, and he sne that boy sneezed seven times. His spirit came back to his body, and he gave him back to his mama. Resurrected. Hello? Is it true? I'm talking about the second touch. Now, Jesus was in Bethsaida and said, Hey, I see a fellow here who needs to be healed. I wonder what, if he wants to be healed. But there's so much unbelief in this town, I've got to take him to the city limits to pray for him. That's right. He took him out of town, away from all that unbelief that was rampant in Bethsaida. Every city has got a principality. Bethsaida's just happened to be unbelief. The demon of doubt, if you want to be precise. He said, what would you have? Knowing all the time what the blind man wanted. But you've got to confess your need and ask for what you want. Or you won't get a thing. So the blind man said, I I'd like to have my sight. Well, come here, said Jesus. I'll pray for you. And he touched him once. But since he lived in such an atmosphere of unbelief, one touch wasn't enough. Do you see anything, said Jesus? Oh, I see. Many's trees walking. It's a crooked, upside-down, twisted, distorted vision that I have, like most people have that's only had one touch from God about 10, 20 years ago. Hallelujah. Well, the way I see it, preacher, the church ought to be run this way. Well, you don't see straight anyway. You need a second touch. 
you get yourself another touch, maybe you'll see straight. See things. Well, the way I think it ought to be, but just don't think until you get the second touch. Jesus said, come here, boy. You're worse off than you was before. Let me pray for you the second time. And he touched him, and his vision curled up, and for the first time he saw plain. Men as men, trees as trees, everything in perspective. It's amazing that everybody I know practically has got 20-20 hindsight. Say amen. Not much insight or foresight, but my, don't they have the hindsight. Hallelujah. You love him? I'm talking about a second touch, which means another fresh anointing on you tonight. My horn hast thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You cooks don't put stale oil in the cake. You mechanics don't put stale oil in the crankcase. You've got to have fresh oil tonight. No matter how good last night's service was, it's not good enough for tonight. It's time for another touch. I'd like to preach on that, but I can't. I'm preaching to... You might miss that one like Peter did. But thank God that the rooster didn't crow three times. I said God would let him crow three times. Now, Peter denied three times, but that's man. God didn't cut him off by letting the rooster crow three times. Say amen. Talking about the warning tonight. When, when the rooster crows again, remember, he's already done it once. You are to do this according to the text that we read tonight. You are to remember and call to mind the word of God. If you're going into error and you feel it, that's the first warning. The rooster has already crowed. Get a grip on yourself and bring the words of Jesus to mind. Bring the word of God to mind. That's what Peter did when the rooster crowed the second time. He brought the word of God to mind. And the third thing that Peter did was he thought upon it and he wept. I think it's time to just think about the Word of God tonight. The tears wants to roll, let them roll. I believe when you meditate upon God's Word, then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you have good success, the Scripture said. Hallelujah. If you are wounded, if you have gone into error, if you have been hurt, smitten, that rooster has crowed and you woke up to the fact that you've had one warning. Some folks don't catch the first one. Some are stopped only by the second one, like Peter. But thank God the third one hadn't grown yet. There's still hope. There's still time. There's still time to get to God. Our tent trucks, we always tagged them in Alabama over the years because, well, they weren't so strict on the, uh, uh, the inspection stickers. Plus, they were cheaper there in Alabama, and you know how tent preachers was over the years as far as having any money in their pocket. Hallelujah. We was always getting them in the mail about uh, a couple of months late, but then that's because at that time of the year we had it stored. But those registrations always said the same thing from Alabama. It said, uh, this tag expires September the 30th, such and such a year. And then at the bottom it would say, grace period ends November the 15th. So we knew that the tag was expired at the end of September, but we could run them tent trucks until grace period was up, November the 15th. All right. Hallelujah. But, whoa, oh, be tired. Don't you get caught on the highway after November the 15th. I'm talking about grace period tonight. I know some of you are kind of blankly staring at me like you've already expired. But we're in grace period. And you can run around after you've expired, but don't be caught out there after grace period ends. Say amen. It's still time to get back to God. It's still time to listen. There's a rooster crowing somewhere. Hey, wake up. Take warning. Take heed when you stand lest you fall. Take an account. Examine yourself. See if you're still in the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And if you're not earnestly content for the faith, there's lots of crazy doctrines going around today. Say amen. Yes, think, call to mind the word that Jesus spoke. 
Have we called to mind for you tonight the Word of God? Wonderful. And now that he meditated, he thought upon that word, he began to weep. So let the tears trickle down tonight and weep over God's word. In conclusion, I'd just like to tell you, Samson fooled around a long time. Did he not? Yes, yeah, Samson said, you know, I'm going down marrying me a Philistine. God said, oh, no, you're not. You can try all you want to, and you'll never marry that Philistine. He went to the wedding, but the wedding never came on. It was a big fight. Amen. He slew 30 Philistines and took their clothes. I mean, he went back later to try to find his wife, and she'd been given to another. He never got to marry that Philistine. I'm going to marry me a Philistine. No, you're not, said God. I called you to kill Philistines and not uh, carry on with them. Say hallelujah. Whatever God has called you to do, friend, you'll find yourself having to do it. You can fool around and play with it, play fast and loose with it, and monkey and mess around with it all you want to. But in the end, in spite of yourself, you will be destroying it. It will erupt and blow up in your face. You, you, you don't have the power to go against the call of God that's in your life. Say hallelujah. I believe that. Thank God. So here he was. He said, I'm going to marry a Philistine. He never did. He finally went down and kept fooling around with Philistines and he lost his life. His ministry was cut short. But it never happened until the day he started talking about the secret of his power. The hair of his head. And the first rooster crowed when he wove it into seven locks. The second rooster crowed when they tied it to a weaver's beam. But you see, he used up grace period and expired. He went over the brink of no return. The third rooster crowed on Samson as he talked about shaving it. And Delilah did, my friend. And he woke up bald as an eagle and weak as a cat. And there he was in the grist mill grinding. When finally they were, came out to destroy him, he said, I wished I could finish my ministry. A 40-year ministry is what I desired because 40 is the number of testing. The 40 is the generation. I wished I could serve my whole generation. But he only lasted 20 years. But in his death, he pulled down the pillars and slew all the Philistines in that particular house. He could not escape death after the third rooster crowed. He had to die. He just better make the most of it on his way down. Friend, I don't want my ministry cut in half. I don't want my life cut short. I want to finish the course. I want to keep the faith. I want to set up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me. Thank the Lord. Balaam was on his own old mule and determined to go down and curse what God had blessed. But that's impossible to do. You hearing me? An angel stood up and stood in the path and the prophet was so determined he was blinded by his own rebellion. And that mule started speaking in other tongues. Well, it was other tongues for the mule. Up to now, she'd just been hee-hawing. Say amen. Turn right around and rebuke the prophet. Say, what's the matter with you? And you can't see an angel standing in the way here. If I go any farther, I'm going to be cut off. The first rooster crowed, and she turned aside and went into the field. About time some of you went back in the field. I could elaborate on that, but it won't. He whipped her back on the road of presumption and self-will, and the second rooster crowed. The angel come again. This time she jumped sideways and jammed his foot against a stone wall. You ever been between a rock and a hard place? He'll give his angels charge concerning thee, lest any time you dash your foot against a stone. But if you're dashing your foot against a stone, the angels must have backed off. You better check yourself. I know who you are and where you're at. He whipped her on the road again. This time there was no going forward or backward or sideways. She was jammed, and that angel appeared again, and now the rooster crowed, figuratively speaking. Strike three. The third time the angel appeared, and there was no turning back. I'll go home, said Balaam, after he saw the angel. You won't go home, said the angel. You've gone too far. You get on down, and don't you dare say nothing to Balak but what I put in your mouth. And he went down and prophesied truth. 
But you know, before the thing was over, he taught Israel, Balak, how to cast a stumbling block because he was so infiltrated with a mixture of compromise and good and bad and truth and error that he taught them how to commit fornication and how to eat things sacrificed to idols and it was Israel's sinning that separated Israel from Israel's God. There was nothing that Balaam could prophesy against Israel because once you're righteous before God all the devils from hell can't touch you. It's the sin that your iniquities that separate you from your God. So you yeah, amen. Then God backs off. And because Balaam taught him to do that, he had really gone beyond the point of no return when the angel appeared the third time. The rooster crowed the third time. That poor little old donkey fell down on her knees. What else could she do but show an example of prayer onto this foolish prophet on her back? Say amen. I say, listen for the second rooster. That's my message tonight. Listen. Some of you already missed the first one. Some of you are going to miss the second one, but for God's sake, don't get tied up with the third one. Learn your lesson. If you miss missed the boat the first time, you're not you, you learn from it. You miss it the second time, you're not too bright. If you miss it the third time, there is not much hope for you. There's practically no hope. Hallelujah. His spirit will not always strive with man. I said his spirit will not always strive with man. God is a merciful God, but he's also a God of judgment. God gives life, but he's also a killer. The soul that sent of it should die. Hallelujah. I say tonight in my little text, verse 72 of the 14th chapter of Mark, the second rooster crowed. Peter called Jesus' word to mind. He thought upon it and he wept. Repentance is good for the heart and soul. Crying is not only good for the eyes. The heart is made better through tears. So I say tonight, whatever we do, let's think on the word preached tonight and let the tears go down. And a broken heart and a contrite spirit, God will not despise, but save of such. Thank the Lord. Are you happy? I'm through preaching and it's not that late and this is our last night to be with you and lots has happened tonight, but I want to take the last few minutes of this service to pray for needs. For people who are here with needs. Say praise the Lord. I would like to start praying for the sick right here, but something is checking me. I hear a rooster. No, I'm hearing a rooster. Some of you already missed the first rooster. Some have missed the second rooster. Some remembers hearing the first rooster and they're looking around. Hey, Brother Freddie, any minute now I'm going to hear a rooster. The second rooster crowing. God speaking to me. God checking me. God warning me. I'd like to preach on the second touch, but I'd rather preach on the second warning tonight. I don't want you to miss the boat. I want some of you people that's in the permissive will of God to get back to the perfect will of God. Some of you that's in left field and the ball's over there and right and you've missed it a thousand miles, it's time to scramble and get back where you belong. How many understand what I'm saying? Some of you have totally missed it. And you've paid for it. You've got a deep wound. That's the first rooster. That the second rooster could crow any minute. For some of you, he already has. But for you that hadn't heard it yet, and you that have heard it and want to get back to into Jesus' good graces and stand by his side before old Caiaphas, please do it before the third crow comes. Say amen. That, that's going to be too late. I'm afraid I'm going to have to pray the first prayer tonight for souls. I'm going to have to pray for those that have heard a rooster once and you're not about to hear the second one. You want to get back out of God's permissive allotment and get back into the perfect will where you belong. Nothing could be more important and I know that no matter how three or four of you are agitating in your seat right now trying to find a way to get out of this meeting if you had a drop dead tonight you would prefer and glory and, and rejoice in the fact that you were given this last opportunity to escape the third rooster crowing say praise the Lord and that's why I want to pray there's nothing more important the, the television can wait your house can wait your lunch on the table can wait.
tomorrow will come and if you don't show up down there tomorrow you'll find the world will carry on and revolve without you we're not so important as we think we are what is important is not to hear another rooster crowing down our back hallelujah I'm going to pray this prayer for souls and it's for people that want to get back with Jesus where they belong in the place of God where they really ought to be it might amaze you who needs this prayer sitting here tonight some big Christians some so called good Christians some people who consider themselves Christians some people feel like they've been saved a hundred years need to get back in the place with Jesus where Peter should have been too much rooster crowing going on these are all warnings these are stop signs telling you hey turn around go back into the perfect will of God for your life again I gotta pray for souls I'm sorry I gotta pray for souls first every person tonight that wants to get into the place of Jesus you belong and you don't want to hear no more roosters would you stand for my first prayer stand for my first prayer a lot of warning signals been going out if you can read the signs at all it looks like the direction is downward uh, negative uh, problems uh, will this, these troubles never cease brother Freddy? yes they'll cease if you come back to your whole heart tonight with your whole heart to the place of Jesus you belong hallelujah there's still others that need to stand there's others that need to stand you've been hearing too many roosters one more might be too many thank the Lord Hallelujah. Don't stand at the door. Come on through the door tonight and come up and stand by his side. Listen, Peter, if you don't come through the door, you'll be without. You will do without. Everything about you will be without. Hallelujah to God. I know you don't understand it all, but don't try. What's over your head is under Jesus' feet. Hallelujah. Amen. You won't make a mistake. The fish that we get our hands on tonight will have the tribute money. Hallelujah. Oh, thank my God. If you can have the Father in heaven reveal anything to you at all, then the keys of the kingdom can be put into your hands. God's not fussy. Who he uses? Just show up for work. He'll use anybody. But at least show up. Roosters have been crowing. It's time to get back at Jesus' side. What do you say? Judas went too far. Balaam went too far. Samson went too far. He had to die now. He could have ministered and judged Israel another 20 years, but now he had to die with the Philistines. Don't wait for the third warning. Usually that warning is too late a warning. Hallelujah. Don't you think it's time to hit a home run on your third swing? Oh, yes. I feel to pray. Now, but I'm hesitating for a few more to stand. Waiting just a few more moments for some to stand. Hallelujah. Someone says, I, I, I'd be afraid to get down to Brother Freddy's meeting. This is not my meeting. This is the Lord's meeting. I'm afraid to go down to that preacher's meeting. He'll try to save me. Well, then you need to get saved if I never showed up. Hallelujah. Don't you know how hot hell is going to be for people who know the way and refuse it? all it takes is just making your peace with God then you can go about your business I don't know for the life of me why people just put it off and put it off to the drop dead and then it's too late had a whole lifetime to just simply make peace with God that's all hallelujah so I said well my pride well you hang your pride it's not worth talking about I don't know what you're proud about the older you get the uglier you get say amen there's nothing left to be proud about Make your peace with God tonight. But somebody's going to look at me. Well, what do you care to look at you? They're all going to be looking at you at the judgment. Every generation of every living soul that was ever created is going to look at you and hear your whole case then. Don't you think you better get it buried? Put under the blood. Blot it out of the book tonight so it can't be read before every ear one day. All right. Quite a few people are standing, and I still know that there's a few tonight that's been hearing roosters. That's bad signals, if you can read the signs, if you know what I mean. If you're hearing roosters, you've slipped a little ways away from Jesus' side, Peter. You're going to have trouble with doors the rest of your life, and it's going to be over your head what's under Jesus' feet. I'd rather have it in my head, at least in my head, what Jesus got under his feet. I want it overwhelming me. 
Hallelujah. And tonight, if there be any others to stand, this is my first prayer of faith. All right, that's it. I give two altar calls every night. The first one is by invitation. That's this one. The second one is by ear. I go and get them by the ear. So I'm glad that the most of you came along peaceably on the first one. Now let us pray. Lift your hands above your head while we pray. Dear Lord and Savior God, draw these people back to thy bleeding side. Let them not be ashamed of thee, so you will not be ashamed of them. Lord, we're praying for souls. It's a sacred moment. Even those who feel like they've already been saved, they have drifted somewhat. Heal their backslidings. Pull them back into the place with God that they belong tonight. Whoa, draw them nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Hallelujah. Lord, let us not deny thee, as Peter did at Caiaphas' home. Oh, Lord, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Lord, may we knock on doors. May we witness. May, may we speak up and give an account to God and an answer to every man concerning the hope that lies within us. I thank you, Jesus. Whoa, glory to God for what you're doing for these lives tonight. There's been roosters crowing in their background crawling around their home and around their life and around their ears and these are just signals that we need to get back we need to get back back to god back to the perfect will back to the bible back to prayer back to the power of the demonstration of what pentecost is supposed to be all about god grant it to be in the lives of all these souls who stood reestablish them reinstate them put their name back in the lamb's book of life even tonight let them even now be assured with the great assurance that they're your property. Take care of them, Lord, and may there not be a step between the two of you. In Jesus' name, may we be yoked together with thee tonight. Lord, stir, save, restore. Bring restitution to every soul. Everyone say, thank God he's done it for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Thank my God. Go ahead and rejoice and praise him once more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Glory, glory, glory. Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is totally filled with his glory. Even tonight, even tonight. Everyone said, praise you, the Lord. Oh, thank God. Wave your hand in victorious victory. We could go home right now, or we could pray just a few prayers before we go home. It's just whatever you want to do. This is called the frosting on the cake if you'd like to have your cake frosting. Some people say you can't have your cake and eat it too, or don't be too sure. Anything could happen here at the conclusion. Praising God. Are you happy? Someone said praise the name of the Lord. Oh, glory. That sister, come, let's pray for you tonight first. You that had the first prayer, do you feel like God answered the prayer? Did he do so? Did he do so? You that stood, feeling now, you know that uh, you restored. Right now, you know you're not going to hear no more roosters for a while. Let's see your hands. All right. Then I consider the first prayer a success. Thank God. Now I'm praying the second prayer. You can turn this way and face me. Hallelujah. Have you come for God to, to touch your body today? Yes, I have. You want to be healed? Yes, I do. Now, you didn't tell me you needed to be healed. No, I didn't. Do we know each other? No. You never met? No. Why? I wonder why I felt led to pray for you next. Well, first of all, we conclude that you need to be healed. Hmm? That in itself is a revelation. Hmm? Amen. <laughs> oh, glory. And do you believe we've got to hold the right fish? Oh, yes. <laughs> all right. Put your hands up. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, you don't have to face them. You can face them in a the minute. Let's just face the music tonight. I'm going to pray for you physically, for God to heal you, as I am led to pray, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Keep your antennas up. Something will strike them. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. Aren't you glad Jesus is here? There's only one way to receive the supernatural, and that's sit under it. It comes by osmosis. You absorb it. It grows in your spirit. You can't learn it out of a book or have somebody teach it to you. Submit to authority, and you grow authority in your limbs and in your being. It's like the Spanish moss appears on these oak trees out here. We don't even know where it comes from. Nobody even planted a seed, but it started to appear from the atmosphere as the tree sat in the atmosphere. You understand? You have, first of all, a little weakness bothering haziness coming upon your eyes. Is that true? Mm -hmm. now, no optometrist or doctor can heal your eyes, but yours will be healed now in a few moments. You believe that, don't you? Yeah, I do. Go with it, God. Thank God. Secondly, there has come a strain through the air of your back. You've suffered tonight as you sit here with your back. I have. Did you tell me these two things? No. I wonder who told me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Third, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop unless you want me to. Go ahead. Oh, all right. I would have stopped, but you won't let me. Don't say, well, if I was you, Brother Freddy, I'd quit while I was ahead. You get one thing straight to your head. I know when I'm in the Holy Ghost. I'm way ahead of the devil when I know I'm in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There's a fish right here that's got a special coin in her mouth. Say amen. God wants to do something for her. Thirdly, you have had trouble, a difficulty moving through the stomach right through here and you fear surgery because of this. It's almost sometimes like a tax that comes. I have one now. Oh. Now, you're going to save nineteen hundred and seventy-two dollars worth of the hospital bill. Surgery. Some say, now I don't believe that. Well, don't believe it. I never used to believe it either. But do you know what? One day a woman brought me the doctor's estimate, and I said, "Well, I won't, I won't doubt those numbers again when I see them." Someone said, "Are you sure it'll happen?" Well, if it be true, we'll see what's going to happen. You can always tell the tree by its fruit. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Jesus said, "If you can't stand me, you must believe for the work's sake." What well, he said? Hallelujah! Come, thank God. Wonderful God. Now here's a small matter I want to pray for. It. There's like a scratching tickle, or like a string hangs down your throat. Mm -hmm. Let's get that first. Someone said, I didn't see the string. That's your top lock for not looking in the spirit. There's another world here tonight. Thank God for the realm of the supernatural. I'm sick of the natural one anyhow. Hallelujah. Praising God. There comes to even your legs, poor circulation. Your feet become numb. They're numb even tonight. And although many of these things are evident here tonight, God shall now take them away. Which the revelation don't mean tiddlywinks if God's not going to do something about it. You see that? The revelation it helps for faith, of course, and it's standard reasoning that God wouldn't reveal it unless he meant to heal it. But then the facts are that the working of miracles has got to also be attributed to the word of knowledge. You hear? I said the working of miracles has got to work in conjunction with word of knowledge for this work to be done. We thank you tonight. We have done everything that you've sent us to do and delivered our souls. Some have received it, not everybody, but most have, and understood it. And now we can do no more. The rest is totally and strictly up to you. Healer. There goes a suffering from your back that you suffered all night. So it's clear. You're having surgery on your lower abdomen now. Legs be healed. Numbness leave her feet. Someone said it's done. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now it seems to me, some of you, some of you that we took a few extra minutes of the first case, but we're going to pray rapidly here because I don't want to stay here no longer than you want to stay here. If you want to leave, I'll leave with you. That's just how simple it is. Amen. But we've had quite an effort into this meeting tonight, and we haven't done it in vain. And if I thought we were going to do it for a waste of time and in vain, I'd quit right now. But if you're smart tonight, let everything in the world hang. Don't miss what Jesus is going to do. Hallelujah. We have paid a dear price for what is about to happen now. Come. Look at your toes and see what is... Is there any feeling there at all? Yeah. Go to check your back. Not, not at all? Is your throat clear? Yes. You're telling me the truth. I'm telling you. Right here. None? None. You've had surgery right here tonight in front of everybody? Yes. <laughs> you saved yourself $1,972. Must have. Surgery is completed. Do you ever smoke tobacco? Put your hands up. You do now no more. Lucifer! Huh? Nicotine come out of her. It's gone. Now, my sister, you can really go around and report you saved. You can really go around and testify and they'll receive your testimony. The nicotine has come out of your life and hence your spirituality is no longer warped. Hallelujah. Taste. Try hard not to find a nicotine taste for tobacco flavor. No. No. I submit to you that over 20 years in our ministry and crusades, every time somebody lost the taste of nicotine, it was always a sign of deliverance from tobacco. It's always a sign of victory over nicotine. Now, for some other Ministries that might work different than that, but that's how it works for ours. For over 20 years, the removal of the taste of tobacco has been a sign of deliverance from the habit. I told her today, I said, I know if I can get here. I got lost last night trying to find this church. I said, I know I'll be delivered from tobacco. You told her that? I did not tell you. I said, I know I'll be delivered. That wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not. Oh no, you, you might just well get the whole nine yards. <laughs> Put your hand up again, please. I noticed that your eyes have cleared; they're brightened already. Yeah. Now, receiving the Holy Ghost is just a little different than getting your healing. God will heal a sinner and say, "Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you." Of course. But he won't give us in of the Holy Ghost to get saved and cleansed and be hungry and praising and worshiping. It's just a little different process. That's right. Hallelujah. Get hungry to be filled and start praising him and worship. Don't even beg, pound, pray, or plead. Just praise and worship. Praise and worship. That's all. The power of God come upon us. In Jesus' name. Be gone. Can you feel the Spirit of God? Yes. Power and the presence of God all over you? Yes. I want you to come right down here and spend just a little time praising and worshiping the Lord because it will come stronger and stronger until it will flow out your mouth. I'm not about to teach her how to talk in tongues. That's not God. God will speak through her as the anointing increases and the power begins to whelm up within her fill her clear phone it'll flow out overflow and come out her mouth but it comes to praising and worshiping praising and worshiping a little different process than your healing God will heal anybody and say don't you sin no more or worse things will come on you now right but you must be hungry to be filled and begin to praise and worship God in that particular operation you can be filled I'm not talking about being taught I'm talking about being filled Hallelujah. Come, sister, let's pray for you next. Well, what do you think about that? It's pretty good. It's wonderful. Yeah. You've had 
I hate to be repetitious, but you have had a little eye strain yourself, and like a little burning sensation to your eye. Yes. Raise your hands. Let's get rid of that first. There it goes. Jesus name. Secondly, you have a sensitivity in the area of your throat to here, glandular. Is that right? Yes. Now, this is a miracle, you see. Hallelujah. Now, I know it's a little late for some of you, but don't underestimate the miracle power of God here tonight. It is a very sacred thing. Amen to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wanted to pray for that man's lungs real bad. I guess he's not hearing me. Uh, that, that man in the plaid right there. Could I pray for you before you go? Yes. Let me pray for you before. I know it's past your bedtime and all that, but I felt led to pray for your body before you left, okay? Okay. Raise up your hand. First, for your lungs here in your breathing. There's emphysema settling in here, and it needs God to heal it. You also have had just a little, your blood pressure's moving on you slightly. It goes a little high. There is a little haziness to your vision and your eyes. Your ears have a little dullness creeping into the hearing. You have stiffness along your neck here. It also affects your spine. It feels like first stage of arthritis getting in your back. You want God to loose that for you? Well, yeah. Okay. Another thing, there are habits that have bound your life, not the least of which is nicotine, tobacco. I smoke. Hmm. Is it not about time for God to set us free from that habit? Would you like to be free of it? Can you quit it? Yes, God take it from you. I know you can't quit. You've tried, but let the Lord take it from you. All right, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, we're going to pray about that. And when this happens, when God takes this, there's going to be something also transpire in your soul, small at first, but every day it's going to get bigger. It's called salvation. No soul salvation. Ready for heaven. Because you're getting down along those years that any day you could go. So you've got to be ready to go. As a sign on to you, there's something over your head. It's like a big old cloud of Winston smoke. Winston smoke. You recognize that? Sure do. Yeah. You smoke that kind? Yeah, I smoke that kind. And I think we're ready to pray, aren't we? Let's pray. Everybody get your hands up and pray with me. Lord Jesus, touch this man tonight and deliver his soul. Let him know salvation has come to his house and that his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, God, do a mighty miracle work of regeneration within the man's spirit. And Lord, let it not be in his mind, but in his heart. A real life experience with Jesus. It'll be small, but it will grow. And whenever God calls him, he'll be ready to go. This was the word of God tonight. Heal him. Let him live longer. Take the emphysema from his lungs. Oh, Lord Jesus. Take the stiffness from his bones, back and neck. I thought you can't hold him either. In the name of Jesus Christ, correct his blood pressure. Open up his ears. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah. Even his eyes, strengthen his seeing and vision of his eyes in the marvelous name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Move from him now the Winston nicotine smoke and let it come out of him and be loosed from him and be gone. And everyone said it is gone. Up, kiki bean robo shine. Hallelujah. Thank my God. Ah, take the weakness from his heart and give him a new heart in Christ Jesus. Everybody rejoice again. Pray with me, Dad. Dear Jesus. Jesus. Come in my life. Come in my life. Let me know I'm saved. Let me know I'm saved. Put my name in heaven's book. Put my name in heaven's book. Wash me in Jesus' blood. Wash me in Jesus' blood. Let me be ready should you come tonight. Let me be ready for you to come tonight. I believe you're hearing me. I believe you're hearing me. As brand new peace. As a brand new peace. Joy. Joy. A beginning. A beginning. In my soul. In my soul. I'm God's property now. I'm God's property now. I'm headed for heaven. I've made peace with God. I 
Everyone thank God with him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Suddenly, he has fallen upon the stone and become broken. That's better than letting the rock fall on you. It'll grind you to powder. Hallelujah. Take a deep breath. Something brand new and clean, way down deep. Way down deep inside. Feel that way, yeah. yeah. I told you it wouldn't be a great thing, but it would be a beginning. Thank God. That's Jesus Christ in you, in your life. And you take a taste and see if there's any tobacco flavor now. No. Did, did you bring any tobacco with you tonight? Search it out if you did. We've got to get rid of it. Well, this part always scares me half to death, you know, but I have to do it by faith anyway. Anybody read? Well, you're going to... You take the first stomp, and I'll take the second stomp, and we'll be forever free of this. You first... <clears throat> Everyone said goodbye, Winston's. It's all over now. Hallelujah. He's free of it. Hallelujah. Save money. You're going to save money. You're going to save your health. And you're going to save your soul over this thing. Hallelujah. I hope it works. And I'm going to pray to that end too. Lord Jesus, make him sick to his stomach at the next smell of smoke. Do anything to protect him from going back to the habit. Lord, I know you set him free. The taste is gone. You give us the sign. Let him make heaven. I'll meet me in heaven now. I'll be looking for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before you go, let God touch your back and legs, okay? You want him to do that? Amen. Suddenly, he's in no hurry. Lord Jesus, touch her back and heal her hip joints and heal her legs. Take the crippling out of her. Crippler, leave loose and go from her tonight. Let the legs come limber. Let the big three-in-one oil can come down from heaven. Oil these bone joints and let her no longer be crippled. Pressure's high, put it down. Down it goes. Come walk a few steps with me now. Oh my goodness. We'll be with you in a minute, sister. Sorry to leave you hanging there. But first things first. That feel, what, what's that feel like in your leg? Feels good. You've been quite stiff and seized up in these legs. Yes, sir, I have on the hip for a few days. But I don't pay it much mind. I just go on the way. Now you can really go on. Uh, check your hip and see just how it feels. Really? Now, was it worth the whole night just to get that heal? It sure was. We put a lot of work in this meeting, and God's going to pay us. He's not going to shortchange us. But you don't get nothing for nothing. you got to work for it. God's touched you and he's healed you. Amen. Now we can get back to our sister here. God bless you. We had got to talking about the burning of your eyes and the glands of your throat. Was that right? That's right. Now get your hands up. We'll see what else God plans to do for you tonight. Amen. Well, they decided to stay. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Let's give them a good hand tonight. <laughs> Pressure's over and the heat's off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, there's nothing going on now, Turris, right now, anyhow. Not a blessed thing going on now, Turris. Some things going on, but ain't blessed. Thank God. I love you, Jesus. Someone said, I love you, Lord. My sister, there is a hereditary factor in your family. There are people in your family who have difficulty with the blood pressure. Is that true? Yes. And yours goes a tiny bit high yourself. God's going to heal yours because it is a hereditary factor. And you're, every year you get older and, of course, it becomes a little stronger. God's going to heal that. And again, you have been bothered 
with the odd stress like a hand squeezing on the bottom of your chest, on the left side of your chest. Yes. And go over your heart. You have been secretly suspicious of the condition of the heart. Yes. What has contributed to this fear is like a little numbness going down this arm. Uh, yes. Until there are very it's very true that there are many nights but for just minutes to a time you sleep over here because you cut it off when you sleep on the other side God's going to heal your heart and that numbness will leave your left arm take another step of faith you have in the, the, the lower corners of your back it, by times there are appearing sore spots you have wondered what it is, and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's your kidneys. It's your kidneys. Mm -hmm. And here's a sign to you. Not only does it hurt, but you have woke up some mornings with like a burning sensation, even to the bladder area. This is infection of the kidney. God will heal it. And again, there comes a weakness into your ankle bones. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Especially in the left ankle bone on the top of the instep and at the calf of the back of the leg. I'm feeling it there now. Now that's the only part of it that I felt in my own body. The rest of it came by knowledge and by seeing. Okay? I'll be willing to help you as we go along here if you pay attention. Healer Jesus. Rapandiki Andrada Bohusri eye, blood pressure down eyes be cleansed. The glands are healed in your throat. Lord, the calf of the left leg and the instep, the left leg and the ankle of the left foot. Indra bon Roshai, both ankles now are healed. Someone said it's done. Someone said some of that 